So part 4 of relative equilibrium, uh, we will just continue uh, discussing uh, rotating vessels. So here, we have closed vessels. So in the previous lecture, we have open vessels. Now we have uh, closed vessels that is rotating. So same solution applies in determining Y in rotating vessels. So all of the formulas that I have presented on the previous video, uh, you can just uh, take or visit that video again and uh, use the formulas that I've uh, given there. So here in closed vessels, we have different liquid conditions. So first, if we have y over 2, is less than the depth or the distance from the uh, top portion, okay, top rim of this closed vessel to the initial liquid level. So, uh, we have the same figure or same solution as with an open vessel where there will be no water that will be spilled on this container. So, uh, the, the depth y will just be distributed equally above and below okay so it's starting on the on the side and ends at this point which is the vertex of this paraboloid uh, the next uh, next condition is that if uh, y over 2 is equals to d or the liquid uh, surface will just touch the top rim of this closed vessel okay so this is enclosed so uh, it will just touch the uh, this point the side of this top portion of our cylinder so uh, same solution as with open vessel since there's no uh, liquid that will be spilled in this container so same solution only and same figure now if the computed y exceeds this distance d, same as with the principle that we have in a closed vessel in under rectilinear motion, is that that liquid surface will be extended above the, the top portion of this container. So uh, we will have an imaginary liquid surface above, okay, following this computed distance y so here in determining the position of this uh, liquid surface is that one major in um, one major consideration here is the volume of the air why because since this is a closed vessel there will be no water that will be spilled so it means the void inside this uh, this container will just remain the same whatever the motion of this container. So it means the volume of air uh, before it is rotated will just be equal after it is rotated. So when, uh, when this, uh, when this uh, cylinder is now subject to rotation so again we will form a vortex following the computed distance y but we will just have an imaginary liquid surface above it and also uh, if we have a computed initial volume of the air when uh, it is not yet rotated and it is a uh, static state so uh, the volume of this paraboloid here should also be the same when it is at rest. So this volume here should be equal to this volume. So uh, we will take into consider this volume. So here when the computed y over 2 is greater than d, um, it will not follow anymore the distance y over 2 which is distributed equally above and below so this 
will not follow this principle, but we will consider the volume of air in computing uh, the dimensions of this new paraboloid, uh, of this paraboloid that is formed when it is rotated. Okay? So, that, this is the major difference in a closed vessel. We have an extended uh, liquid surface above, and we will consider the volume of air. Okay? So next liquid condition, if the angular velocity is increased again, so we will have a deep, deeper or larger value of y. So since y is greater than h, so we will now again have an imaginary liquid surface above this closed vessel. So taking into consideration again the volume of of the air after it is rotated so we will be able to compute the required here so uh, squared property of parabola will be very useful in this type of situation or liquid condition so if the angular velocity is increased again so we will have a larger value of y so um, Taking into consider again the volume of the air, so it should be equal to the initial volume before it is rotated. So uh, this will be the figure if the value of y is very high. So uh, the distance y is, is extended above and below this vessel so uh, this is an imaginary liquid surface okay so this is imaginary imaginary and this is also an imaginary liquid surface okay so it means uh there will be an uncovered portion on this bottom portion of this uh, closed cylinder so uh, again we will use squared property of parabola taking into consider the volume of air in this in this uh, closed vessel so we can form several paraboloid okay we have this smaller one and this one okay this is also paraboloid and the largest paraboloid okay so depending on the required on the problem um, we can solve it using squared property of parabola so uh, same application for uh, determining the pressure okay pressure at the bottom of the tank okay just multiply the unit weight of the liquid by its uh, pressure head or its depth. So here in closed vessel, uh, let's say uh, we are required to determine the maximum pressure at the bottom of this tank, uh, let's say in this figure. Uh, of course, uh, the maximum pressure is present on the sides of this cylinder. Because the pressure head or the, the depth of the liquid is greater compared to the center. And in determining the pressure head, since we have an imaginary, imaginary liquid surface here, okay, in determining the pressure in an enclosed vessel, uh, we will consider this as an imaginary liquid. So, in determining the pressure head for this side, uh, the total height should be this depth right here. So, we will include this imaginary liquid. So, for the minimum, which is present at the center, so just find the depth of the fluid from the center, from the bottom part, and 
uh, measure it. So here, as it, it is touching the bottom portion of this tank, we have a zero, zero pressure. But here on the side, we will consider this uh, depth right here, the extended height as an additional pressure head on this closed vessel. Same here. Okay, this is considered in determining the pressure head. Okay, as well as in this figure, this is considered as pressure head. Okay, so we can now solve some problems. Example, we have a closed cylindrical vessel, 2 meter in diameter, and 5 meter high. So, if this is our cylinder, we have 2 meters diameter. So, it means the radius is 1 meter. Okay, this is 1 meter radius. Uh, we have total height of the cylinder which is equals to 5 meters then we have a depth 4 meters it is rotated to its own vertical axis at a constant angular speed w the air inside the vessel is under pressure of 120 kilo pascal pressure of the air okay so this is water. If W is 12 rad per second, what is the pressure at the center and the circumference at the bottom of the top? Okay, so we have a distance D of 1 meter, the clearance from the top of the cylinder to the liquid surface. So let's answer first letter A. For letter A, uh, we have W equals to 12 regions per second. So let's just draw the figure again. Okay, let's copy this for letter A. Uh, for letter A, if we have W of 12 rad per second, we are required to determine the pressure at the bottom and we will determine the pressure at the center, this is 0.1, and the circumferential pressure at the bottom, this is 0.2. Okay, so it's also 0.2. Okay, so let's determine first y with the formula w squared r squared over 2g. Since our w is already in rad per second, we can substitute that. Okay, squared r is 1 meter squared over 2 times 9.81 meter per second squared. Then y is equals to let's solve y uh, 12 squared so our units are consistent we have rad meters and second so those units will be cancelled out and we will have a unit of meter 9.81 okay y computed y is 7.339 meters so this is your distance y so just to confirm if if we will form a vortex here by the liquid surface that will be formed when this uh, container is rotated. So let's determine y over 2. So if uh, y over 2 is greater than the distance d, it means that we will have an imaginary liquid surface above uh, this, uh, this container. Okay? And as well as, we can also confirm that, uh, will it touch the bottom portion of this, of this container or not? So let's confirm first y over 2. Uh, divide 7.339 by 2. Uh, divided by 2. 
that's 3.6695 so uh, the depth d is just one meter so this is correct assumption that uh, d uh, the d is less than y over d so we can assume that uh, this 7.339 okay from this initial initial liquid surface um, we will have a liquid surface that in this in this form okay form of paraboloid okay so they are symmetrical okay and this is a paraboloid class okay so uh, in this uh, value of y which is 7.339 uh, uh, its distance is when divided by 2 is just 3.6695 so uh, this uh, vortex will not reach the bottom portion of this uh, of this tank but uh, we can confirm that later on when we determine the dimensions of this paraboloid right here because if we have here an imaginary uh, line above the container okay we can form two paraboloids the larger one okay so the larger paraboloid is here the larger para paraboloid is this one okay and the smaller paraboloid is this one okay so we have two parts this first part and the larger parabola so uh, this total vertical distance by this whole paraboloid the bigger paraboloid is equals to 7.339 so that's 7.339 uh, meters up to this point okay bottom part of this uh, paraboloid form so okay uh, of course class we will not follow this y over 2 to be equal above and below this uh, this liquid this uh, vortex that is formed um, what we will do is just we will equate the volume of the air before it is uh, rotated to the volume of air after so let's compute first the volume of air in a static state so when it is at rest we can determine this volume okay this volume uh, we can determine that by the volume of a cylinder so pi r squared times d which is equals to pi times 1 meter squared d 1 meter so let's compute pi r squared times h h uh, d is 1 meter so this is 3.1416 cubic meters okay so it should equate to this volume okay so uh, let's have another drawing to be clear when it is rotated there with w equals to 12 grad per second so this is the figure after it is uh, rotated okay so this is the volume of air okay so volume after is equals to volume of air before so the volume of air after is equals to volume of paraboloid which is one half pi r squared h so that's the general solution but as we can see here um 
the radius that we will use here is this portion only okay this distance only this distance for r so let's say this is distance x this is distance x okay this will serve as the radius of this smaller paraboloid okay the radius of the circle of this of the base of this paraboloid so we are in a side uh, in the front view so we can only see the plane surface okay but this is the radius x so let's rewrite the solution we have one half pi x squared times h so what will be this h this total depth of this paraboloid this is the smaller paraboloid okay so let's say that's y1 that's y1 okay from there from this point to the uppermost portion of this closed containers so we have y1 okay this is the general formula we will just rewrite the equation with these variables so this is your volume of air after so uh, we have 3.1416 so the volume of air after is just equal to volume of air before volume of air before we determine 3.1416 cubic meter so this is now your equation but we don't have yet the value of x and the value of this distance y1. So we will use squared property of parabola by considering this larger uh, paraboloid that will be formed by this vortex when it is extended above the above this closed cylinder so uh, this distance to the vertex okay, of this parabola at this point is your computed y which is 7.339 and this radius right here is also the radius of the cylinder so by squared property of parabola we will just square the radius and take its ratio with respect to its depth okay squared property of parabola uh, let's consider this smaller uh, paraboloid we have x squared over uh, depth y1 y1 is equated to the radius r squared over the depth y okay the larger paraboloid okay so uh, this is equation one we can make another equation using this squared property of parabola so if you want to determine first uh, x okay we express y in terms of x so uh, what we will do is x squared equals to or we, we cross multiply this we have x squared y over r squared is equals to y1 this is equation 2 we substitute equation 2 to equation 1 okay substitute equation 2 and equation 1 we have 3.1416 equals to 1 half pi x squared y1. This is your y1. We have x squared y over r squared. So we have values for r, uh, y, x is the only unknown in this equation. So we can now determine x. So 3.1416 equals to 1 half 
pi, uh, we combine like this. So if multiply x squared to x squared, we have x raised to 4. Then y is equals to 7.339. 7.339. Meters, this is in cubic meters divided by r squared. R is one meter, okay. one meter is to be okay. So let's solve this first one half pi multiplied by this uh, ratio one half pi multiplied by. 7.339 over 1 squared, okay, 11.528, 3.1416 cubic meters equals to 11.528, okay, so, uh, the unit is, this will be cancelled out, okay, per meter. So, we have x raised to 4. Okay. Multiply both sides by 1 over 11.528 per meter. 1 over 11.528 per meter. Uh, we will have a unit of meter is to 4. And... This would cancel. Okay. Three point one four one six over eleven point five two eight is zero point two seven two five meter raised to four x raised to four. Then take the fourth root of both sides to find x. Okay. Find x. So the fourth root. This one. Fourth root of 0 0.2725 is equals to 0 0.7225. 0 0.7225 meters. Okay, this is x, and we can now solve for y1 y1 is equals to equation 2 y1 is x squared y over r squared x is 0 0.7225 squared y is uh, 7.339 divided by r squared is 1 meter raised to 2 y1 is equals to 0.7225 square times 7.339 divided by 1. 3.831 meters. This is your distance for y1. Okay? Y1. The depth of this, of the, uh, of the paraboloid form inside this container. Okay, we can now solve the pressure at the center as well as the circumference of the bottom portion of this tank. So, since we already have y1, y1 is 3.831. Let's just write it here. 3.831. Uh, 3.831. This y is 7.339 meters x is 0 0.7225 meters okay so uh, let's determine the pressure at the center first by determining this depth let's say this is h1 we can determine h1 by subtracting the depth of the container which is total of 5 meters h1 is equal to 5 meters minus the computed y1 
is equal to 5 meters minus 3.831 meters. So H1 is 5 minus 3.831. That's 1.169 meters. From that, we can now compute the pressure okay, at the center, which is, let's say this is 0 0.1. This is 0 0.1. Okay. Pressure at 0 0.1 is equal to product of the unit weight of water and the liquid multiplied by the pressure head. Then, since we have a given pressure of air inside this container, which is equivalent to 120 kilopascal, so we will add that pressure. Okay, we will have an additional pressure due to the pressure uh, applied by the air. Okay, so 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter multiplied by H1, which is 1.169 meters. Then we will add the pressure of the air, which is equals to 120 kilopascal okay so our units are consistent because when this will be cancelled out this this is in kilonewton per square meter or in kilopascal so by the way class uh when we computed h1 or when we computed y1 uh we confirmed that uh we have uh the the bottom portion of this vortex didn't reach the uh, bottom part of the container okay so we have the our, our assumption is correct when we computed y1 okay which is equals to 3.831 only so but it is a different scenario when uh it exceeded the bottom portion that's in letter c so okay uh, going back here in this uh a solution here for the pressure at point one or at the center we have 9.81 9.81 by 1.169 then we add 120 kilopascal so this is the pressure at the center of the bottom of the tank 131.468 kilo Pascal. So this is the answer for point one. For the circumferential circumferential uh, pressure at the bottom of this tank here or here, okay, which ha which has the maximum pressure because our pressure head is higher. So we can solve the pressure head by just uh, adding the computed H1 by this depth right here, the Y, right? Okay, if this is your total depth, let's say this is H2. So that H2 is just equals to H1 plus y so h1 plus h1 plus y okay we already have the values for h1 and y now we can now compute h2 for h2 we have h1 of 1.169 meters plus y which is 7.339 7.339 39 meters h2 is equals to 1.169 plus 7.33 8.508 meters okay so we determine now the pressure at point 2 so pressure of point 2 is just a product of unit weight and the pressure head or this h2 right here and we will add the pressure of the air 
So the air is pressurized. So we will add the pressure of the air which is equals to 120 kilo pascal. So uh, unit weight of water times H2 plus pressure of the air. 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter times 8.508 meters plus 120 kilopascal. So pressure at point 2 is or we can just uh, 9.81 times 8.508 plus 120. That's okay. 83.463 and we add 120, 203.463 kilo pascal. So this is the answer for letter A. Okay, this is the answer for letter A. Pressure 1, pressure 2, which is the pressure at the center and circumference at the bottom of the tank. Okay, so this is the solution for uh, a closed vessel that is rotating. Okay, next letter B. What angular speed W will just zero the depth of water at the center? So for letter B. Uh, from this initial position of the liquid surface um, after the vessel is rotated okay, at an angular velocity w uh, it is determined that the liquid surface of this vortex will reach the bottom portion of this container so what will be the value of this angular speed here in rad per second okay. so in rad per second or in rpm so same solution uh, in letter a so we form okay we already draw the assumed uh, figure of the liquid surface as it reaches the bottom portion so of course uh, the volume of the air at the initial position should be equal to this volume okay so this volume of air right here so it should be equal okay volume of air before should be equal to the volume of air after so uh, we will use again uh, similar paraboloids or we have here uh, two paraboloids that will be formed okay the bigger paraboloid and the smaller okay this is the bigger paraboloid and the smaller one is this one. Okay. We will use a squared property of parabola. So let's assign uh, variables for the radius. The radius. We have distance x or this smaller radius of the smaller circular base of the smaller paraboloid. And we have the depth. Okay. So the depth. For the smaller paraboloid, is equals to the depth of R of the no, of the container. So let's say the depth of the of the container as well as the smaller paraboloid is y1, and the total depth of the vertex, including the extended liquid surface. Okay is your distance y okay so as you can observe here in closed uh, vessels so the liquid surface always uh, reaches the 
the lateral side of the container even it is uh, extended above the container so it terminates on the side which is parallel to the side of this container and in this problem the vor the vertex of the liquid surface is also at the bottom of the container so let's use squared property of parabola so using squared property of parabola uh, we equate the radius squared okay of the larger parabola over the distance y equals to this uh, smaller radius x squared over y1 okay. so r we can have the value of r it is given the radius of the cylinder y unknown this is unknown x is also unknown and y1 it is equals to 5 so, okay this is check so let's form an equation based on this uh, solution so we have uh, let's express uh, y in terms of x or we can also express uh, x in terms of y uh, let's say we cross multiply this we have y1 r squared over uh, y equals to x squared square root both sides we have an equation uh, y1 r squared over y equals to x this is equation one okay this is equation one and the second equation will be formed from this uh, equation right here the volume of air before is just equals to the volume after so going back to this equation um, we have the volume of air before can be computed by the volume of this cylinder okay this is cylinder in shape we have volume of air before is equals to pi r squared times d okay depth equals to pi r is one meter squared times one meter so the volume of air is equals to 3.1416 cubic meters which we already determined that in letter a um, same solution again as in letter a we will equate that to the volume after or the volume of this parabola inside inside the container so 3.1416 cubic meter okay. so from this equation from this equation okay we can have this solution we have uh, 3.1416 equals to the volume of this parabola okay so again the volume of air after is equals to one half pi r squared h. So taking into consider the smaller paraboloid, we have the variables as one half pi. The r here uh, will be replaced by x because this x will serve as your radius of this smaller paraboloid. Okay x squared and h is the depth which is y1 okay the depth the smaller parabola okay volume of air is one half pi x squared y1 is five meters substitute now 3.1416 cubic meters is equals to the volume of air after one half pi x squared five meters okay so we can solve 
x so we can solve x okay let's solve x first divide both sides okay divide both sides by one half pi times five meters this is one half pi times five meters becomes a doubt okay becomes a doubt have x squared equals to okay, x squared is equals to 3.1416 divided by one half okay, one half times pi times 5 okay that's 0 0.4 0 0.4 okay square meter that's x squared so going back to this uh, squared property of parabola we have this equation right here that we formed earlier okay you can use this x squared is equals to y1 r squared y or going back again to the squared property of parabola okay rewriting the solution or the equation that we form on equation one since we have determined x squared here we can directly substitute this value uh, 0 0.4 meter squared in this whole value uh, of x squared or you can determine also x by taking the square root of both sides which is square root of 0 0.4 is 0 0.632 we can also do that okay so, going back to squared property of parabola, we have r squared y equals to x squared over y1. To determine this uh, y, okay, we equals multiply r squared y1 divided by x squared is equals to y. We can determine y, okay. So, substitute r is 1 meter. 1 meter squared y1 is 5 5 meters x squared is 0 0.4 okay so but if you are going to substitute the value of x 0 0.632 632 you have to take the square of that thing. okay so here we directly substitute 0 0.4 equals to uh, y okay y is equals to uh, 1 squared is 1 multiplied by 5 over 0 0.4 that's 12.5 meters that's how high is depth of vortex okay so that's 12.5 from from the bottom we will measure 12.5 going to the top okay extending it uh, above the uppermost portion of the closed container okay so we already have y that's the total depth of the vortex okay including the extended liquid surface so uh, using this y we can use it in solution in the solution for the value of y which is equal to w squared r squared over 2g we can determine w okay so let's just rewrite the solution we have y multiplied by 2g divided by r squared is equals to w squared okay isolating w you can have this equation and taking the square root of both sides we have w equals to the square root of y 2g over r squared okay so Let's rewrite that again. W is equals to y 2g over r squared. So w is equals to the square root of y. Y is 12.5, 12.5 meters, 2 times 9.81 meter per second squared, uh, divided by the radius, which is 1 meter. Okay, 1 meter square okay. 
w is equals to square root of that's 12.5 times 2 times 9.81 over 1 squared. Okay, we have w of 15.66. Okay, 660 rad per second. Okay. Then, if we want to convert this to revolutions per minute, we have 15.660 uh, rad per second is multiplied by the conversion factor 1 RPM is equivalent to pi over 30 rad per second. So, in revolutions per minute, we have uh, 15.660 divided by pi over 30 and 49. 0.542 RPM. That's the answer for letter B. Okay, for letter B. Next, for letter C. For letter C, if we have uh, an angular velocity of 20 rad per second, uh, what will be the area that will be uncovered the bottom of this tank okay so for letter c let's compute first the value of y using general formula of w squared r squared over 2g so y is equals to uh, w is already in radians per second 20 rad per second raised to 2 r is 1 meter square to be divided by 2 times g 9.81 meter per second squared so y is equals to 20 square times 1 square over 2 times 9.81 that's 20.38 seven meters so the value of y is very high it even exceeded the value of the total depth of the container so in this uh, it means that the vortex will be above and below okay it, it, it will be extended above and below this uh, container and as required and the problem uh, what will be the area of the of the container at the, the, the bottom that will be uncovered okay so here's the figure uh, the vortex extended at the bottom as well as the top of the container so we have a y of 20.387 the total depth of this vortex that is formed including the extended uh, liquid surface okay imaginary liquid surface so uh, of course the volume before is uh, equal to the volume after okay and let's just put some uh, variables here because we can form here several paraboloid uh, the first one is this large paraboloid second is smaller and this and the smallest paraboloid is right here okay again biggest the smaller and the smallest paraboloid uh, it is essential to determine the values of the radius as well as the depth of this paraboloid in determining the unknown, which is the area at the bottom. So let's put some dimension. Uh, we put radius of the base, bases of the par paraboloid that is formed. So this will serve as radius, okay? Because this is circular at this portion. So let's say this is x1 and 
its depth will be measured from that point up to the vertex of the paraboloid. Okay, say so this is y1. And we have the second paraboloid, which is this at the bottom. Say so this is x2. And this vertical distance is y2. Now, uh, let's make an equation. Okay, using squared property of parabola. Okay, so let's start at the largest paraboloid. We have r squared over its depth. Okay, the depth y or 20.387 meters. It is equals to the ratio of x1 squared over y1 and it is also equals to the ratio of x2 over y2 so we have radius of r okay radius of r which is equals to 1 so we have the value for this x2 unknown uh, y1 is also unknown uh, x2 this is x2 this is unknown y2 is also unknown so we have four unknowns uh, we can make an equation here by equating first r squared over 20.387 to x squared over y1 okay uh, Actually, we can first write here as y. Let's use first the symbol y. Okay, to make it clear. This is y. Uh, uh, let's focus first here. We have r squared equals to y or x1 squared over y1 is equals to r squared over y. x1 squared is equals to r squared y1 over y so substitute the value for uh, r and y x1 squared is equals to r is 1 meter squared y1 is unknown uh, y is 20.387 meters so x1 squared is equals to uh, 1 squared is 1 20.387 okay you can use this decimal or you can just use this fraction y1 over 20.387 okay equation 1 equation 2 for equation 2, we use the equation for r squared over y and x, x2 squared over y2. So, x2 squared y2 equals to r squared over y. So, x2 squared is equals to r squared y2 over y. x2 squared is equals to y2 is the same y as 20.387 r squared is also 1 take the square of that we will arrive okay with the same denominator which is y2 over 20.387 okay like let's ignore the unit terms okay since they are all in meters there's no problem with that so where can we get another equation this is equation two uh, we can get another equation by determining the volume of air at the initial position okay and the volume of air at the final position or after okay. so the volume of air 
we already know that it is equals to uh, 3.1416 cubic meters. How about the volume of air finally? Okay, the, the volume of air after it is rotated. So the volume of air is this portion only. So uh, this is a frustum of a paraboloid. Uh, what we can do here is subtract this volume of, of this paraboloid by this smaller paraboloid. Okay? So, what remains is this yellow portion. Okay? So, this paraboloid right here, this shaded area is computed by subtracting the two paraboloids. Okay? So, the solution uh, the larger paraboloid volume 1 half pi r squared h so this larger paraboloid here okay this this one is uh, the r will serve as x1 x1 will serve as the r 1 half pi x1 squared h the depth is y1 subtracted by the lower portion of the paraboloid, which is this area. Okay. So, one half pi r squared h, so our radius will be x2. x2 squared height is y2. Okay. It's about in this smaller paraboloid. Okay. So, let's substitute the values here in equation 1, equation 2, in this equation 3 that we formed here. We have 3.1416 cubic meters equals to 1 half pi. Uh, x1 squared is this value y1 over 20.387 y1 minus 1 half pi x2 squared is y2 over 20.387 y2 3.1416 uh, we compute 1 half pi and 20.387 that's Okay. Or we can factor out one half pi okay, times one over twenty point three eight seven. We can factor out that to y one y one squared because y one times y one and y two squared. Okay, so. Uh, we divide both sides by this value, 1 half pi multiplied by 20 over uh, 20.387. So divide both sides by, that's pi over 2 times 20.387. Pi over 2 times 20.387 to eliminate this this value here. So, we have here is 3.1416 pi per 2 20.387 40.774 So, let's ignore first the uh, units. They are consistent naman in liters. Okay, that's y1 squared minus y2 squared. Okay. 
equation 4. Uh, where can we get other values for y1 and y2 to eliminate one variable? So going back here, uh, y1 is this total depth from the uppermost portion to the bottom or the vertex of this parabola. And y2 is measured from the bottom of the top to the bottom or the vertex of the parabola. So it means the sum of y2 and the depth of this container is equals to y1, right? 5 plus y2. So going back here, uh, we have uh, y1 is equals to 5 meters plus y2. So another equation. Substitute that here. Substitute 5 in equation 4. Um, y2 can be determined. Uh, y1 is 5 plus y2 squared minus y2 squared. Okay. 40.774. So, uh, we will form a quadratic equation here. Okay. So, that's 25 plus 10 y2 plus y2 squared minus y2 squared. Oh, y2 will be cancelled out, y2 squared. Okay, means that we have 40.774 40 minus 25 equals to 10 y2. So, 40. 40.774 minus 25, 15.774 equals to 10 y2, divide both sides by 10. Okay, that's 1.577, that will be in meters, y2. That's the answer. We, we only have y2, okay? So, since what is required here is... Uh, it's 1.577 uh, yes 1.577 meters for y2 since what is required is the area that is uncovered at the bottom portion of this of this top uh, let's just determine x2 from equation number 2 okay so going back to equation number 2 what we have is Okay. So here we have x2 squared is equals to y2 over 20.387. So take the square root of both sides to determine x2 squared, uh, the x2. Or uh, let's say we find x2 squared only. So y2 is 1.577 meters. 1.577 divided by 20.387. So x2 squared is equal to 1.577 divided by 20.387 is 0 0.077 meters. So since what is required is area of a circle, okay. So this is a circle. With the radius of x2, uh, we can determine the area area of uncovered okay area of uncovered portion at the bottom. Okay, the area is equals to pi r squared or the radius which is x2. So, x2 squared. That will serve as the radius. Since we have x2 squared here, we directly substitute 0 0.077 in x2 squared. Okay, 0 0.077 uh, meters. 
Okay, so this is in square meter. Okay, computed value here. And x to squared is in square meter. So, square meter. The area is pi times 0 0.077. Uh, that's 0 0.242 square meter. That's the answer for letter C. Okay. So that's it, class. That's how you solve a problem in close uh, rotating vessel okay a rotating vessel that is enclosed so unlike the open vessel that, they, that is a lot easier um, closed vessel is a little bit complicated when you try to solve this type of problems okay that that ends our lecture in relative equilibrium of liquids thank you for watching god bless